So, last but not least, Tom, Tom Arnold. He is the chair of the Rural Africa Task Force, and Tom has served as chief executive with Concern Worldwide, which is Ireland's foremost humanitarian organization. He has also been involved with the Scaling Up Nutrition Movement and was also um, uh, involved in the um, uh, Ireland's leading world uh, po uh, policy think tank, which is the Institute of International European Affairs. So Tom is currently busy drafting uh, the recommendations and the um, compiling the report for the task force. And um, his title is actually updating and the way forward of the Agri-DEFCO Task Force for Rural Africa. The floor is yours, Tom. Thank you, Leonard. <coughs> and just by further way of background, just a minor detail. I spent 10 years working with the European Commission at the beginning and was at the present when uh, the, the CTA was being considered all back in the early 1980s. Okay, thanks. I'm delighted to be here. I, I think this morning what I've been hearing is has, is very useful. I'd like to uh, just briefly provide put the task force into its political context because I think not everybody would be aware of that, and then go on to talk about where the, where we've got to in our work and tell you the sort of things that are emerging in our work and will likely form part of our final report. The political context is obviously the fact that Europe and Africa have been talking at a more high level and in a more significant way about their relationship over the past number of years. There are obviously a number of reasons for that. Uh, the migration crisis in 2015 is one of them, but there's the general issue, more general issue that uh, Europe and Africa have a mutual, a deep mutual self-interest in working together uh, to towards uh, common objectives. Uh, and out of that, and out of particularly context uh, discussions in recent years between the African Union Commission and the European Union Commission uh, on Agriculture, out of that emerged the idea of setting up a task force on rural Africa. The task force was uh, established, started its work in May of this year, and it is, was mandated to finish its work by December. Uh, and that's where we're at. We, we are now at the point where we have largely agreed the structure of the report. Uh, we have c a considerable amount of work to do in a very short space of time uh, to deal with the drafting of the report. And that's why some of the ideas that are, have emerged this morning, I think, will be particularly useful. What we have come up with uh, to agree at the highest, at the broadest level, uh, we've, we're, we're looking at this report I would say through a bifocal lens, asking two questions. Firstly, how can Africa generate enough jobs for its rapidly increasing labour force? And what specific contribution can agriculture, the agri-food sector and rural areas make to that goal? And the second part of the lens is what distinctive contribution can Europe make working in partnership with Africa uh, to achieve that goal? It's important maybe just to put, on, put into the record, because not everybody is aware of this, the scale of the challenge facing Africa over the coming decades. Africa has the world's fastest growing <coughs> population. It's projected to grow from 1.2 billion in 2015 to 1.7 billion in 2030 to 2.5 billion in 2050. And between 2015 and 2050, Africa will account for 70% of the total increase in global population. That increase in population is obviously giving rise to increase in the labor force. And we've had in, the, in the, one of the recent presentations there the, the, the statistic that at the moment, the numbers entering the labor force in Africa is 20 million a year. By 2030, it will be 30 million a year. And 60% of this cre increase in the labor force will be in rural areas. And these numbers and this analysis has led our task force to two main conclusions. Firstly, that the major political challenge facing African leaders in the coming years and decades will be to generate enough employment to, absorb, to meet the labor, increased labor force demands. And secondly, and this is very important for, uh, I think, a group like this, 
that the agri-food and rural sectors <coughs> should play a key role in African economic development strategy and in job creation. So what we're really looking at in our report is what policies need to be in place to maximize job creation in the agri-food and rural sectors. But we recognize that the agri-food and rural sectors operate in a much wider political and economic context, which will determine how these sectors can grow. So early on in a report, we're noting the importance of making progress in resolving conflict, in building political and macroeconomic stability, in investing in Africa's people through better nutrition, education, and health, in bringing clean energy and power to the continent, and in protecting African resources, natural resources. And we believe that African leaders working in partnership with Europe must address these major challenges, and in so doing, create the conditions for progress in the agri-food and rural sectors. So we're not mandated or capable of providing detailed answers to these big issues, but we have to note them as core background issues before the agri-food and rural sectors, which we are now looking at, will be able to operate to best effect. So when we start looking at the agri-food and rural sectors, we've identified four key policy areas which we think require priority. The first one, and it connects entirely with the presentation from the OECD, we ad we're advocating using a territorial approach to economic, for economic development and job creation, highlighting the interdependence between rural and urban areas, and specifically paying attention to this notion of intermediate scale cities. We're going to say that this approach, this territorial approach, will stress the need for increased investment in public goods and services in rural areas, aimed both at creating more jobs and making rural areas more attractive places to live in. Secondly, we will propose measures to support the ongoing transition in African agriculture. We will, we will note the very wide diversity between African countries in terms of agricultural productivity and growth. And there are lessons to be learned from the countries that are achieving that growth and that are not achieving the growth. And those lessons are around about domestic policy commission, uh, commitment to the sector, allocation of budgetary resources, and the creating, creation of a positive environment for farmers and the food industry. And the overall aim has to be that significantly more African countries should be achieving these high, should be learning these lessons and achieving these high standards of growth. <coughs> the third area we'd be focusing on is looking on investment to develop a sustainable African food industry. We note that the African food industry is underdeveloped in terms of processing and value added, and we see scope for Africa to provide an increasing share of its own rapidly increasing demand for food, much of which is currently being met by food imports. Africa and Europe can partner in meeting these opportunities through increased private sector investment, through moving the industry up the value chain, through improving food safety standards, promoting intra-African trade, and developing a scheme for African food geographical indicators. The fourth area we're looking at is the, in the whole area of protection of Africa's natural resources and natural resources and natural resource management. We see these, this as being key to sustainable uh, food production and to mitigating the impact of climate change. And Europe can assist African governments in mainstreaming natural resource management and climate resilience strategies into agricultural development policies. So they're the broad policy priority areas we've identified. We now have to populate those, each of those areas with as clear as possible recommendations for what actually needs to be done in policy terms, all in through the framework of thinking what Africa should do itself. They're, they're ultimately responsible, but those areas where Europe has a particular distinctive possibility to help uh, in a partnership. So we're going to draw then, as we come to the final chapter of the report, we're going to draw on our discussion in each of these four topics to bring together in this final chapter 
a set of recommendations we believe should be implemented by Africa, <coughs> working in partnership with Europe. We will emphasize the importance of building capacity, particularly of African youth, in implementing these recommendations. We will stress that the agri-food sector and dynamic rural areas should play a central role both in African development and job creation policy and in the Africa-Europe Alliance for Sustainable Investment and Jobs, which was proposed by President Juncker in his 2018 State of the Union message. And in fact, we see this final chapter of our report as really a first draft of an action plan for the agri-food sector, agri-food and rural sectors to be included in the Alliance for Sustainable Investment and Jobs. We see that the African Europe partnership operating at three levels, people to people level, business to business with emphasis on farmers, their associations and cooperatives and governments. We think the partnership should enable the broad connections of our societies, business communities and governments to build on existing progress being made using modern technology to capitalize on opportunities while drawing on hard-won development experience. And we see there's a particular role for political leadership from the Commission, from the Council of Ministers and from the European Parliament working with EU member states to develop a coherent European approach in building a genuine African-European partnership to address some of the greatest challenges of our time. And there is, I think, this political interest. Last evening I spoke to the uh, AgriFish Council of Ministers uh, to, to present them essentially with what I've said to you here today. And there was considerable interest and input from many countries around the table. 13 of the 20, uh, 28 countries uh, contributed. Tomorrow, I'm speaking to the European Parliament, a joint committee of the Ag Agri Agriculture and Development Committees. So, And indeed, last night, one of the key messages from member states was that we member states want to work together to put together with the, with the institutions uh, to have a coherent policy. So at the end of the day, fundamentally what we, are, what we hope is that the focus that we are giving to the need for increased job creation for rural Africa youth, that that single issue gets the policy and political attention it deserves. Thank you. Thank you very much, Tom. Clearly, um, right moment and right timing in terms of, uh, as Tom said, uh, we are in the middle of actually a week of intense uh, discussions uh, with the member states and with the European Parliament, and we are heading to the uh, uh, event, the summit in in the uh, in Vienna in, in a month's time, uh, where uh, the intention is to to actually present um, a synopsis of the, of the report. So I think we have an opportune moment also to convey certain key messages, uh, which including uh, from this event on, 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 on the generational renewal and the youth and the expectations of youth.